This video is intended for a general audience and in particular for those attending or interested in the World Economic Forum in Davos, January 2020. We critically examine the NOAA NASA 2019 Annual Global Temperature Report, published 15 January 2020. I very much hope the analysis and conclusions will help everyone gain an objective view of climate change and help improve the state of the world. On January 15, 2020, NOAA NASA published its global analysis for 2019. A video was published on its website and this claim was made. On going through the report, the video and the website, I was quite dismayed to find a range of skewed perspectives, invalid comparisons and pseudoscientific methods. It was as if the report had been constructed by a team of sales and marketing consultants selling a product as opposed to climate scientists reporting objective facts. At first, I had difficulty framing my thoughts, but I was fortunate enough to turn to a piece by Professor Dr. Lennart Bengston, which I found expressed my feelings very well. He was not writing about the 2019 report specifically, but about climate change reporting in general. The three points I have picked out are, what is perhaps most worrying is the increased tendency of pseudoscience in climate research. The bias in publication records towards only reporting results that support one climate hypothesis while refraining from publishing results that deviate. And the Earth has experienced over the last hundred years is so small that nobody would have noticed if climate scientists had not informed us about it. There are glaring examples of all these points in the NOAA NASA report. We will start with the proliferation of pseudoscience leading to false conclusions. In the video, it was claimed that globally temperatures were more than 2 degrees Fahrenheit, 1.11 degrees Celsius, warmer than the late 19th century. To examine the accuracy of this claim, I referred to the standard good practice definitions supplied by the IPCC. I then calculated the average anomaly for the period 1880 to 1899 and the average for the 30 year period 1990 to 2019, thus adhering to the IPCC standard. But my calculation made the difference about 25% less at 0 0.83 degrees Celsius. I went back to the video and noticed this. I could not imagine that they would use such a small period of five years for comparison. Would they really? But they had, which is why their claim was greater than that produced using the IPCC definition. Any consultant any high school student will tell you that trends based on short records are very sensitive to the beginning and end dates and do not in general reflect long-term climate trends. This is exactly why the IPCC devised its standard 30-year period and issued this warning. This use of pseudoscience or actually just plain scientific bad practice smacks of the involvement of consultants used to spin a story in order to further a biased agenda. I would therefore extend this point by saying that I am getting more and more convinced that the objective views of climate scientists are being overridden by consultants and a management team obsessed with supporting a single climate hypothesis. I imagine the scenario where the scientist presents this to the management and consultants. Many of you working in corporate environments will be familiar with this process. So were the people at Enron. 
The team gathers to review the analysis, but 0.83 does not impress. What can we do? The IPCC definition is put aside. The decision is taken to use the five-year period for comparison. Pseudoscience wins. Many will say, but that's only a difference of 0 0.28 degrees Celsius, barely a quarter of a degree. I would be tempted to agree that the difference is not substantial, but the non-standard method used is not good science practice and strongly smacks of manipulation of the figures. There are further examples. We can continue the theme already established and bring in the bias in publication records towards only reporting results that support one climate hypothesis while refraining from publishing results that deviate. NASA reports the supporting headline that temperatures were 1.11 degrees Celsius warmer than the late 19th century, but suppresses the headline that US temperatures have dropped by 2.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 1.45 degrees Celsius, since 2012. We can return to our consultants to see how this may have been handled. You will find that there is often one consultant that appears to possess something resembling a sense of responsibility. Such people are often sticklers for detail and a bit pedantic. They are usually disliked by their colleagues. One such consultant points out that the drop in US temperature is of such a magnitude that it is greater than the entire increase of the globe, 2 degrees Fahrenheit, from the late 19th century to 2015-2019. He questions whether this can be correct. It looks odd. The others consider the decision is taken to spin a more favourable conclusion. Such decisions are often taken not by the consultants, but by the management, who is keen to pursue his agenda and his career. So in order to report results that support the climate hypothesis and suppress others, it was decided to report that 2019 was the 34th warmest year in the US. This is perfectly true, but devoid of any relevance and any meaning. It did not make headlines, but was neatly tucked away on the website. We now turn to a statement made by Mr. Gavin Schmidt, director of NASA's Goddard Institute. We crossed over into more than two degrees Fahrenheit warming territory in 2015, and we are unlikely to go back. This shows that what's happening is persistent, not a fluke due to some weather phenomenon. Just what does this statement mean? Going forward, should we regard two degrees Fahrenheit in the same light as Planck's constant? This statement is emotional, pseudoscientific gobbledygook. Perhaps Mr. Schmidt was advised by a senior consultant. Use the principle of FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt. Above all, say something that cannot be disproved, such as we will proactively deliver our core values going forward, or Global warming is likely to reach 1.5 degrees Celsius between 2030 and 2052 if it continues to increase at the current rate. Actually, that is a favourite of mine from the IPCC. Study it and you will see why. But Mr Schmidt came up with this statement. Our awkward consultant might have objected to the effect that if we say this about a rise of two degrees, should we not also say the same about a fall of greater than two degrees? He was ignored. But Mr. Schmidt's statement was published. 
sheer, unprovable, unfalsifiable nonsense. But our consultant was intrigued and looked again at the NOAA data for the US. He noticed that the US temperature in 2019 was 52.68 degrees Fahrenheit, which is less than the US temperature had been in 1900, 52.77 degrees Fahrenheit. He wondered if there was a problem with the data, for he knew there were far less weather stations then than now. But apparently, there is no data quality issue. So this headline, US temperatures lower in 2019 than 1900, was quietly buried. There are other examples, but not to be boring, we will move on. I fully support Professor Dr. Bengtsson when he asserts that the warming of the past 100 years is so small, we would not normally notice. Certainly citizens of the United States would not notice much from this graph. And the rest of the world would not be alarmed by this graph, which depicts our planet having mild and gentle weather undulations. However, this would make anyone sit up and notice. Notice the subjective, unspecified claim of rapid warming. It seems Mr. Gavin Schmidt is a keen advocate of FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt. Both charts show exactly the same underlying data, but the Schmidt anomaly chart exaggerates the warming to the untrained eye. To finish, I would like to highlight the many examples of pseudoscientific, inappropriate and skewed comparisons made in the NASA NOAA report and by the climate community generally. We have already discussed this, so I will pick on this. I believe this example will open your eyes and provide a much better perspective. It is comparing one year, 2019, to a 30-year average. Bad practice. But it is the relevance of the 30 years, 1951 to 1980, I wish to highlight. I will let my imaginary consultant pick up the argument. He asks, what was the global average temperature 1951 to 1980? It is estimated to be about 14 degrees Celsius, 57 degrees Fahrenheit. He calculates that therefore 2019 was approximately 14.98 degrees Celsius. Now he had recently studied global temperatures from 540 million years ago. Earth has passed through two ice ages during that time. Following the Karoo Ice Age, global temperatures had risen, but then gradually fell until they reached such a low temperature that climate scientists judged a new ice age, the Quaternary, had started. This was around 2.58 million years ago. The temperature at that point was approximately 14 degrees Celsius. 14 degrees Celsius! Therefore, 1951 to 1980 was about the same temperature as that at the start of the Quaternary Ice Age. And 2019 was only approximately 0 0.98 degrees Celsius warmer than the global temperature at the start of the Quaternary Ice Age. What on earth are we worried about? In conclusion, the NOAA NASA report is judged to be a cheap exercise in promoting a biased agenda in a manner that betrays NASA's proud past. On top of this, are we sure the data is correct? Are there sufficient quality control processes in place? Which leads me to ask Gavin Schmidt and Derek Arndt. While it is generally accepted that your team has in-depth climate science expertise, does it have the operational management and quality assurance expertise 
required to ensure the accuracy of data gathered. The weather stations are spread across the globe with large concentrations in the US and Western Europe. Are you confident you have the management capability to control this enormous task? Thanks for listening and good luck during and after the forum.